In this lesson, we'll continue our view of reading test eight, section one. We are still on the second passage out of five, the social science passage. This is why no results rarely see the light of day. I assume you watched the previous video. We are on question number 16. And 16, always scan at the next question, looks to be another two part question, all right? Based on the passage, to which of the following hypothetical situations would Maholtra most strongly object? And so if you watch the, the last video, the very last question was a two-part question. Again, when you have these, we know that the range is bound from the beginning of A to the end of D. It's between 36 and 73. And what I want you to do is skim through this range. Don't even pay attention to the, like the individual parts that are broken, these like segments, just in the range. And you're saying to yourself, we want evidence to Mahaltra objecting. All right. And so I think that it just helps. And then you can answer number 16, the first part of the two part question. So we want evidence of Mahaltra objecting. All right. And so let's see, it's, it started at 36. All right. So that's right here. Let's see. Never published definitely disappoints to not see any major effects, all right? And so here we do have a little bit of evidence here, but then uh, we've got Maholtra. Again, we're looking evidence that he strongly objects. So we're, let's keep reading. Find a shift, a change needs to happen. Okay, so still no evidence there. Here, the percentages, these relate to the graph, so that's not gonna yield the answer. Scientist not involved in the study praise its clever design. We've got a professor at Berkeley. He and others know there's bias. Worse, AF researchers published significant results from similar experiments. They could look stronger than they should because earlier results are ignored. This was um, the segment from the very last question before in the previous video, the two part question. But look here, even more troubling to Mahaltra. All right, they really kind of almost used the exact language. We want strongly object for Mahaltra. More troubling, even more to Mahaltra was the fact that two scientists whose initial studies didn't work out went on to publish results based on smaller sample. The non-TESS version of the same study in which we used a student sample did yield fruit, noted one investigator. So here, the, he finds it even more troubling that not only was the null result, like sometimes it's ignored, but even more troubling is initially the studies didn't work out, so there was a null result, but they went on to publish with a smaller sample that did yield fruit. So they kind of like parsed it down just to like selectively to conform it. And that's really harmful to Mahalter and to me as well, right? <laughs> it doesn't seem fair. So we're gonna take a look at the two part question. So we know for the, it's, um, let's see, it's around 63 or 62, number 16. All right, so it's here, 62 to 68, even more troubling. And let's find the answer for this. Most uh, hypothetical, most strongly object, we want that's similar to this. A research study refuses to publish normal results in anything less than a top journal, no. A research study excludes the portion of the data that proves the null result when reporting its results in a journal. This is exactly what was done, right? But they're just giving another situation, a team. So again, the team, even more troubling, they didn't not report the null data. They just kind of streamlined it so it would be misleading. And that one did yield the intended result. All right, let's go on to number 18. The last paragraph mainly serves. So even though this seems general, they're giving us direction where to find the answer. What's the purpose? This is a function question of the final paragraph. All right, and so we just finished this part about how troubling it was. And so here, the last paragraph, a registry for data generated by all experiments would address these problems. The author argue they say it should include a pre-analysis plan that is a detailed description of what scientists hope to achieve and how the data will be analyzed and it would deter researchers from tweaking right selectively using their analyses after the data are collected in search of more publishable results so it really kind of directly addresses this problem with a potential 
solution. And so let's look at the answer choices for number 18. What does it serve to do? Propose a future research project to deal with some of the shortcomings of current publishing practices noted. A, this is not a research problem, right? They have a proposal, it's a solution. B, you can see right away, it's a possible solution to problems discussed in the passage regarding the reporting of social science studies, right? The tweaking, the selectively using, the answer is B. And then we have three questions on the graph. You'll see this not just in the reading, but the writing section as well. According to the graph, social science studies yielding strong results were what? So we have to pay attention. We want this the science, social science studies with strong results. All right. And so that is this first bar. And if we look, so we have this published in the top journal, published in the non-top journal, unpublished but unwritten, and unwritten. So I've got to kind of go back and forth here, but it looks to be right so looks to be like 60 percent were at least published in a top journal or non-journal and then the bottom 40 percent weren't published at all so let's just take a look at the answer choices all right unwritten over 50 percent of the time no it looks like they were published about 60 percent of the time unpublished but written 50 percent of the time unpublished but written I just want to go back and look unpublished but written no that's this one that's only about looks to be maybe 35 percent that's not right and that's a little harder when you have to go up and down but you'll have it right in front of you published in a top journal approximately 20 percent of the time so you just have to pay attention this one I think it looks right 20 percent for the top journal the top journal is this Yes, that's exactly 20% from 80 to 100. This is the top journal. That is definitely the answer. So it's C for number 19. And then we've got two more questions. They're both graph. Which of the following statements is best supported by the graph? So let's look. Studies with mixed results were just as likely to be published as they were to be left either unpublished or unwritten. So mixed results likely to be published as they were left unpublished or unwritten. All right, mixed results is the middle bar. Published of the top two, that's exactly 50%. Just as likely to be unpublished or unwritten. This looks good, right? It's exactly 50% between published and unpublished. And so the answer for that one is A, number 20. And the last question, which statement from the passage is most directly reflated? Re reflected by the data presented in the graph. This one, you really have to kind of look at each one of these. This is not like the two-part question where you're going to skim through it. You're going to look at each of these to say what is most strongly supported. Let's just look at the graph first. It'll help give us an idea of what we're looking for. And if you notice, the strong results the over, it looks like 60% were published, right? But then we get mixed results and it, it now it's only down to 50. And then we get the null results, right? They don't yield the intended results. And this, for published, is a very, is much smaller. And so you should kind of take that away from you. Depending how strong the results are, it really makes a difference on whether the experiments were published or not. And so let's look at the, the ranges. So the first one is 30 to 32. All right. So 30 to 32. In their emailed responses, some scientists cited deeper problems with a study, more pressing matters, but also believe the journalists. No, that doesn't really summarize what the graph states. Let's look at 33 to 36. The unfortunate reality of the publishing world is that null effects do not clear a a, a, tell a clear story. Again, you know, that doesn't really relate. The graph just says they weren't published. It has nothing to do with um, published, right? In specifically that relates to the graph. Let's look at 43 to 45. Not unexpectedly, the statistical strength, remember we, we already defined strength is really the significance of the findings, made a huge difference of whether they were ever published. This is definitely what the table shows, right? How strong the results are makes a big difference whether the findings were published. And so the answer looks like would be for 21, it is C.